The year was 2003. On a cool January morning, you log onto your computer. You received an email with an attached file saying thank you. Thinking nothing of it, you open the file name document.pif. The Sobig worm enters your computer. It immediately starts to make copies of itself, and then the malware creates a mutex to ensure that the machine is not already infected with another Sobig sample. After this, Sobig proceeds to create registry keys so that it can run when the system boots. Sobig sends a message to a hard-coded email address. The message reads hello, and it's presumably used by the attacker to count the number of infections. At this point, the main malicious activity begins. Sobig propagates to all machines connected to the local network, as well as to the roots of several hard drives on the initially infected PC. Then, it starts searching for possible email contacts in various file types. Once this process is complete, the worm sends a copy of itself to every contact found on the infected device. There were many versions of this worm. However, Sobig F became the most devastating one. 2003 was a popular year for worms. A lot of these programs surfaced at that time and supposedly low risk. Sobig was even called a nuisance by one security company. All of that changed when the F variant came about. This time, the worm learned to scan hard drives of machines that it infected for email addresses. It could scan various types of files, which made it quite successful. This behavior allowed Sobig to send itself to the contacts of the victim and drastically increased its infection rate. The Sobig virus wasn't malicious to where it would harm your computer's files, but the sheer rate at which it spreads and its ability to infect a computer multiple times is enough to clog networks and disrupt processes. Sobig caused Air Canada to temporarily suspend flights and slow down computer traffic. At one point, experts believe that Sobig executable was carried in one of every 17 emails. One security company studied over 40 million emails and found Sobig in at least 50% of them. One person claimed to have received a little over 100 emails in just one day and allegedly recorded a period when an infected email would arrive every six minutes. As of now, we still don't know who could have been the person behind the Sobig attacks. Microsoft announced they would pay a reward of $250,000 to anybody for information leading to the arrest of a responsible party. Despite the money on offer, nobody could track down the attacker. Some theories connect Sobig with Ruslan Ibragamov, a Russian citizen from Moscow, who is known as the creator of a spamming software called SendSafe. The theory points to some similarities in code and suggests that Ruslan and a group of developers worked on Sobig together. However, Ibragamov himself has denied these accusations and was never linked to the worm conclusively. The Sobig virus made upwards of $30 billion in damages, coming second only to another worm, MyDoom at $38 billion. The MyDoom worm was released in 2004 and is still active to this day. The Sobig F worm deactivated itself on September 10, 2003. If you would like a video on the MyDoom virus, please let me know in the comments. If you like the content, be sure to check out my other videos and give me a follow. Thanks for watching.